I'm John A. Buchanan. Now, if you watch this channel with any regularity, you will know that I'm not the guy who makes the video that says this new feature exists within the latest version of Logic because I just think that dates badly. And also, what I also think is that it's much more important to look at the creative context for how we might use these new features. I'm going to break all of my rules. This is effectively a video about two things that have been introduced kind of from a mixing perspective within 11.2 of Logic, which I think are really useful to us. And yes, we're going to talk about them in a musical context, but mostly we're just going to rejoice about the fact that these features are here. Now then, Elsewhere on this channel, I've made videos in the past about building templates, ways of curating sounds and putting them together so that every time you come to a new project, rather than starting from an empty page, you've got a collection of sounds that you might like to work with. And what I've done is to choose a sound called Airways, which exists within Logic's library, which I'm going to imagine I might want to be the foundation for a kind of synth pad stem within a uh, template within Logic. Airways sounds like this. Be ready, it's calm. and breathe, which is presumably why they called it what they did. OK, fine. Now, before we move on and start adding more sounds into our track stack of pads, let's just notice a couple of things. Turns out that Airways is a sound that is made from a preset in Sculpture. I didn't make it. It exists in the library. If you want to go and play exactly the sound, you can. And that sound is being shaped through an auto filter, through tape delay, and through, through some compression. Compression after delay. Discuss. And then what we've also got is two separate auxiliaries, which weirdly, number four is first, and that is feeding a bypassed chorus, which is then going into Space Designer and then Channel EQ. EQ after reverb. Discuss. And then what we've also got is, a, oh, by the way, the send level is at zero for that, so it's available to me, but it's not currently doing anything. And then bus two is also available. By the way, bus one and bus three don't exist within this project. I've literally just loaded this sound. Bus two is feeding something else. It, hang on, that's interesting. Are they the same collections of effects? I think they are. So again, I've got a chorus and then a space designer and a channel EQ. So even though it looks like I've got the same effects, weirdly, they're set up with, on two separate auxiliaries. I feel like I'm missing something, but actually, I'm not. Oh, OK. That's interesting. If I click on the two, this one is a nice big plate. It looks like 4.4 seconds of reverb. And then this one is a shorter, nice plate, I think that's going to say, of just 1.3 seconds. OK, so straight away we've got a sound and that's fine. But it's giving us a sound, loads of inserts and two auxiliary buses, which are weird numbers, by the way. OK, fine. Let's suppose what I then do is to choose another new sound. I want another new pad sound to go in my track stack. I'm going to come back to synthesizers. I'm going to come back to pads and I'm going to look through the list and I'm in a calm place. Look, calming waves. quite into this chord progression, can you tell? Okay, so that's nice. What have we got this time? Well, it turns out, again, we've got this time an ES2. We have got, again, a collection of effects, including a limiter. Interesting. And now I've got bus three. So I've got another new auxiliary, which is another new number. And this time it's just feeding a chroma verb. So now, if I decided that I wanted these sounds to exist within the tra same track stack, I've already got three separate reverbs, all of which are related to these sounds in some way. And of course, it probably just keeps being true. If I added yet another new sound and I wanted a third pad to go in this track stack to really make this point, let's again come to synthesizers, let's again come to pads, and this time we'll go down towards the bottom of the list and see what we can see down here. I don't no, let's have a look. We could go for, I don't know, let's have a look. Okay, infinity strings. Yeah, why not? And sure enough, we've now got another thing. Okay, so this time we have got two auxiliaries which have been fed in from the same place again. These two are accessing two of the sounds that we've got already, but we've got another new sound. Hmm. 
don't like that actually. Let's swap that out for an infinity pad. And this time we've got nothing. So this is kind of useful. We can see that as we click on different sounds within the library, they load with the effects that are native to them. If we just keep clicking on different sounds, we can find out how they've been made up. And if it turned out that I'd picked the sound called Massive Space, it too would come with some inserts and an auxiliary. Now, what that means and why that matters is it would be incredibly easy for me to end up with a series of auxiliaries that relate to just one sound, even though I kind of want a reverb that's going to be available to the pads by themselves so that they can all share in the same spaces. I might decide that I like one of those long plate reverbs, but I want it to be available to airways and calming waves and massive space rather than all of those sounds have their own auxiliaries it seems like a crazy waste of processing power and an administrative nightmare to try and have things organized in that way. So let's suppose instead that what I wanted to do, and I knew this in advance, was that I wanted to load these three sounds, but I didn't want to bring in any of their effects on sends because I knew I was gonna put them into a track stack and I wanted some effects that are gonna be native to these sounds without their chosen auxiliaries. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna throw these sounds away all together. And in fact, I'm even gonna throw away airways Goodbye. And of course, now what Logic's going to do is to say, okay, well, you can't have no tracks. What do you want? So I'm effectively starting again from scratch. This time I'm going to choose an empty channel strip. And again, I'm going to choose to open the library as always. And I'm going to come back to the synthesizers and to the pads. And I'm going to come and find airways. But before I click on it, what I'm going to do is to come to these three little dots in the bottom left hand corner. And this is the new bit. And this is exciting. What I have a chance to do is to enable patch merging. And what this now means is that at the time that I import the sounds, I have a chance to decide which bits of those I want to import. So if I decided that I wanted the full thing, the whole lot, I could do this. I could enable all four sections and I'd get any MIDI effects. There aren't any on this sound. I'd get the instrument. Well, there absolutely is one of those. I'd get its audio effects as inserts. Well, I do want those because they're part of the sound shaping. But what I could choose to do is to omit the sends. And what that means is that when I now click on Airways, I'm going to get all of that stuff, but no sends. And if I decided again, as before, that I was going to open another one of these sounds, and I came again back into the section where I was before, and I come and find Calming Waves, which is here somewhere, there it is, and I keep the sends unchecked. What that now means again is I get this sound without any auxiliaries. And the advantage of that is that I can now open up the mixer. I can select both of these sounds and I'm in a position to assign brand new auxiliaries to them. Now, of course, at the moment, even though I threw away the original sounds, I have the auxiliaries that were imported in the first place here, which isn't quite as helpful as it might be. Again, I'm going to just throw those away for a moment. So what that now means is that I can select both of these tracks. I can set up auxiliary bus number one the first available one, I can turn their sends up. And now these guys are a shared synth pad reverb. And both of them are feeding into the same space. When I add Chromaverb, for instance, or if I add the Quantec Room Simulator to be their reverb, then great. I've now got one space which is available to both of those sounds and we're in good shape. And of course, not only does that mean that I'm taxing the CPU less, it also means that when it comes to mixing it, I want my pads to be feeding into a reverb that is the same because then they're going to get glued together in the usual ways. So this idea of Patch merging is really useful. I would make sure that if you load sounds from the library or you're creating presets of your own, or you bought Cinematic Pads 01 from John O'Buchanan Music, then maybe you have an opportunity to load the individual part without the instruments, without the MIDI effect, without the audio effect, without the sends. You can just load the bits that you want. That's really useful. Okay, what's the second feature within the mixer which is here and new and exciting and wonderful? Well, it's long faders. What I have a chance to do within the view menu for the mixer is to open up long faders. Oh, and actually this is really nice. What we suddenly get is this wonderful, much more mixing desk style thing. Now, of course, if you're working on a laptop, this probably isn't going to be your best friend because, of course, it's going to eat up uh, screen space immediately, the window resized, uh, the mixer window resized. And of course, if I'm working on a nice big screen like I am, that's great, fantastic, all that good stuff. 
maybe this is going to be so useful to you. But what is really nice if you're working in multi-monitors, and you may be able to see this, you may not, is that over here my laptop is also acting as an extended display, and it's um, fader length hasn't changed, and I can do it the other way around. So if I come back to regular fader length, they look so small now, and I come across to the dedicated mixer that I've got over here on this screen, and I come to view, and I come to long faders, they'll get longer on my extended display, but not on here. So actually that's really nice, rather than that being a kind of global choice that you're making in every mixer window that you might have open across multiple displays, then great. That's really nice. And the long faders are fantastic. It basically means we've got more travel when it comes to automation. It just feels a little bit more pro, putting the pro in Logic Pro. There we are. It's a long requested feature and now we have it and it's available. So if you want it, it's good. So in this video, we've just looked at a couple of administrative things, both of which really relate to the mixer. And in particular, patch merging is really useful if you're building templates and you don't want to end up with 16 predefined auxiliaries, which are randomly assigned using numbers you don't want them to be. If you want to be taking more control over how that's all set up, that's much more straightforward than it used to be. And long faders, well, they're just great.